Welcome to the Medication Policy and Procedures Training for Seminole County Public Schools. The purpose of this training is to educate SCPS personnel on district medication policies and procedures. Upon successful completion of this course and quiz, you will be authorized to give medication to Seminole County students. Annual renewal is required. Our medication policy is based on Florida Statute 1006.062. This law states that students who require medication during the school day or during school-sponsored activities must receive their medication. We will start first by defining some terms for you. A licensed health care provider is a licensed professional with prescriptive authority. This includes doctors, physician assistants, nurse practitioners, dentists, and orthodontists. It does not include nurses, PhDs, nutritionists, and chiropractors. If in doubt, contact your school board nurse. A school board nurse is a professional licensed registered nurse with a minimum of a bachelor's degree in nursing or the equivalent. Each school has an assigned school board nurse who is shared by multiple schools. A clinic assistant is an unlicensed, non-medical SCPS employee trained by the school board nurse to perform clinic duties. They are not nurses and should not be referred to as such. Prescription medications are medicines that require a written prescription from a licensed health care provider. Examples are medications for attention deficit disorder, antibiotics, and asthma inhalers. Over-the-counter medications can be obtained without prescription. These include Tylenol, cough drops, medicated lip balm, and sunscreen. Emergency medications are medications used for life-threatening conditions. State law allows all students to carry and self-administer metered dose inhalers, epinephrine, auto-injectors, insulin, and pancreatic enzymes with written parent and health care provider permission. Individual health care plans are documents written by school board nurses for students with medical conditions that require special treatments, procedures, or other considerations while at school. Some examples are diabetes, seizures, and severe allergies. Who designates and delegates medication administration? Statute 1006.062 states that the school principal designates who will give medication. Based on this same law, the school board nurse must provide training for the designees. Administering medication is a procedure that the nurse delegates under the Nurse Practice Act. Therefore, the designee is administering medication under the nurse's license. There is no liability if you act as a reasonably, ordinarily prudent person would have under the same or similar circumstances. Who can administer? Any SCPS employee who has current medication training may give medication. A parent or guardian may give medication to their own child. High school students are permitted under our policy to carry and self-administer prescription and over-the-counter medications with the appropriate authorization. Middle school students may carry and self-administer over-the-counter medications with the appropriate authorization. Florida Statute 1002.20 allows a student of any grade level to carry and self-administer emergency medications with the appropriate authorization. These medications include epinephrine auto-injectors, inhalers, diabetes medication and supplies, and pancreatic enzymes. Medication authorizations. All medications, both prescription and over-the-counter, to be given by school personnel requires completion of Form 157. This is true for all grade levels, elementary, middle, and high school. The form must be completed by a licensed health care provider as previously described and signed by the parent or legal guardian. This form is only valid for one school year, including summer school. The school board nurse should be notified each time a new authorization is received. 
Any student permitted to carry and self-administer medication should be given a copy of the 157 to keep with them. School personnel are not permitted to honor independent requests from a parent or legal guardian to administer prescription medication other than as specified on the authorization. Any incomplete form should not be accepted. Medication should not be signed in until a completed form is obtained. Any questions regarding the form should be directed to the school board nurse. This is an example of the 157 form. All lines should be completed. The first line indicates what condition the medication is being given for. The next line states the name of the medication and its strength. For example, methylphenidate 10 milligrams. The medication name and strength should match exactly what is on the bottle. If a generic brand is substituted, the original prescription brand name should still be listed on the bottle. Next is the route. This indicates how the medication is to be given. The most common routes are oral, inhaled, injected, or topical. The school board nurse should be notified immediately of any orders requiring medication to be given by injection or rectally. Dosage is the total amount of medication to be given. For example, two tablets, three teaspoons, two inhalations. Frequency describes how often the medication can be given. An example would be every four hours. When giving as needed medications, you may need to contact a parent to see if a dose has already been given at home. Time of day is the prescribed time when a scheduled medication is to be given. For daily medications during school hours, you have a window of 30 minutes before and 30 minutes after to give the medicine. If that time frame is missed, it cannot be given. The person designated to administer medication is responsible to ensure it is given on time. Every effort to find the student needs to be made to give the medication within the allowed time. If a medication dose is missed, the parent must be notified. As needed medications, require an indication or symptoms as to when the medication should be given. For example, for an asthma inhaler, for coughing, wheezing, or shortness of breath. Or, use inhaler 20 minutes before exercise. Potential side effects of the medication should be listed on the form. Students who will carry and self-administer emergency medications must also receive authorization from their health care provider to do so. This is indicated on the form by checking the appropriate box. Over-the-counter medications. Middle and high school students may carry and self-administer over-the-counter medications with proper authorization on a SDPS Form 160. Elementary students may not carry or self-administer over-the-counter medication, no exceptions. Each over-the-counter medication requires its own authorization form. Items such as cough drops, sunscreen, medicated lip balm, and bug spray are considered to be medications because they may contain active ingredients that have the potential to cause an allergic reaction. Vaseline and contact wetting solution are not considered medications and can be carried by all students without an authorization. This is an example of the 160 form. All blanks should be completed. Only a parent or legal guardian signature is required on this form. No healthcare provider signature is needed. The dosage and frequency cannot exceed those recommended on the container label. This form must be kept on file in the clinic and a copy given to the student to keep with the medication. The student must carry the medication in its original container and it is encouraged that they only carry one day's dosage. Students authorized to carry and self-administer over-the-counter medications may not store them in the school clinic. Medication forms 157 and 160 are available on the SCPS website. So let's break it all down. At the elementary school level, Form 157 is used for all medication. This includes medication given by school personnel, 
as well as any of the emergency medications that they are authorized to carry and self-administer. Other than the previously stated emergency medications, inhalers, insulin, epinephrine, and pancreatic enzymes, elementary students may not carry or self-administer any other medications. Middle school. At the middle school level, Form 157 is used for any medication given by school personnel, as well as any of the emergency medications that they are authorized to carry and self-administer. Form 160 is used in middle school for students to carry and self-administer over-the-counter medications. High school. At the high school level, Form 157 is used for any medication given by school personnel as well as any self-carry prescription medication. If a high school student is permitted to carry and self-administer their own prescription medication, the physician must also indicate this on the form. Form 160 is used for any self-carry over-the-counter medication. Parent-administered medication. If medication needs to be given to a student, who has no medication authorization form on file, a parent or legal guardian may come to school to administer medication to their child. This is an example of a parent administered medication record. When a parent is going to administer medication to their own child, the student should be called out from class and medication administered in either the front office or the clinic. Afterward, the parent is to fill out the form indicating the name, amount of medication, and the time and date that the medication was given. School personnel should not fill this out for them. The form can be used all year for the same child. It can also be used for more than one medication. Medication delivery. Medication to be stored at school must be hand delivered. A parent or legal guardian may deliver medication to the school for his or her own child, or they may designate another adult to deliver the medication. This adult must present written permission from the parent or legal guardian using a permission to transport form. At the high school level, students may deliver their own medication with parent permission. However, no elementary or middle school student may deliver his or her own medication. If this occurs, the medication should be brought to the clinic designee and a parent contacted to pick up the medication or sign it in. Permission to transport. The permission to transport form is used when a parent designates another adult or their high school student to deliver medication. It includes the medication name, strength, and number of pills, amount of liquid, or number of devices. Parents can write their own form, but it needs to include all of this information. This transport form is kept on file to assure the amount of medication signed in matches what was sent from home. Signing in medication. A record of medication delivered to school is required by state law. A separate log must be completed for each medication delivered to school. A pill count must be done and the medication log completed and signed while the parent, legal guardian, or designee is still present. Medication log. When signing in new medication, make sure the name on the medication label matches what is on the authorization. The prescription number on the medication must be recorded. If it is an over-the-counter medication or sample, you can record the lot number. The amount delivered is the actual number of tablets. They must be counted. If half tablets are delivered, count them as half tablets. If it is a liquid, record the estimated amount in the bottle. Inhalers, EpiPens, and other devices can be recorded as number of units delivered. Record the expiration date for each medication. Dates that will expire during the school year should be highlighted. Parents should be contacted in the month prior to expiration. Persons receiving the medication and delivering the medication must sign the record at the time of delivery. If a parent, legal guardian, or designee takes medication home, it should be signed out on this log. The parent, legal guardian, or designee will be the receiver, 
and school personnel signs as the deliverer. Be sure to record what is being signed out. Let's review what you are looking at when you're checking in medications. A is the prescription number. B shows the name of the healthcare provider. C is the date that the medication was filled by the pharmacy. We require a current prescription and do not allow pills to be dumped in an old bottle. D is the student name. It must be prescribed for that student. E displays the name and strength of the medication. There should also be a brand name listed if replaced with a generic. F is the pharmacy contact information. G shows the quantity of medication. Never assume that the quantity brought in matches the amount stated on the bottle. A count must be done at check-in. H shows the number of refills left on that prescription. I is the manufacturer of the medication. J shows the expiration or use by date. And K shows any directions for use. For example, take with food or store in refrigerator. Medication storage. State law requires that all medication be stored under lock and key in an area designated by the principal. In addition to the clinic setting, medications may be stored in a classroom due to proximity to the student. These medications must also be stored under lock and key. If a medication requires refrigeration, it may be placed in a refrigerator with a lock on the door or in a locked box inside the refrigerator. Medication should not be exposed to food in the refrigerator. All expired medications need to either be picked up or discarded. Expired medications should not be stored in the clinic. Parents should be notified by phone and in writing that the medication is expired and giving them a time frame to pick them up prior to discarding. Also remember, you may not store medications for students who are authorized to carry and self-administer. The six rights of medication administration. First, right student. Assure the medication is being given to the correct student for whom it is prescribed or authorized. Second, right medication. Be sure the medication matches the authorization and is labeled with that student's name. Third, right amount. Give the correct amount of medication. This is the amount written on the prescription label and the authorization form. Fourth, right route. The medication should be administered in the correct manner, whether it is oral, inhaled, topical, etc. Fifth, right time. The medication must be administered within the 30 minutes before or after the prescribed time. Sixth, right documentation. Administration of medication should be documented immediately by the person giving the medication. Following these steps, will assure that you are that prudent person the law refers to. Procedure for administering medication. In order to administer medications correctly every time, the following procedure should be followed. First, wash your hands. Next, have the student identify himself by first and last name. It's a good idea to attach a student photo on the medication record. Next, Remove medication from its locked location and check the name on the bottle. Then, check the medication label to compare with the authorization form. You should never give a medication without checking the authorization, even if you give it every day. Once all information is verified, the medication can then be dispensed. If medication is in pill form, you may pour it from the bottle cap into the student's hands. If it is in liquid form, you may hand the medication cup with the liquid medication to the student. Always be sure that the student has swallowed the medication before documenting administration. Contact your school board nurse for the appropriate procedures for medications that are not administered orally. Documentation. It's imperative to maintain thorough documentation 
each school must maintain a current record of all medication administered by school personnel or by the parent or legal guardian. The form used to document administration of medication by school personnel is the Medication Administration Record, often referred to as the MAR. A new record should be completed if an updated authorization is received with a change in time or dose. We have already discussed the parent administered record, and now we will discuss the school administered record. This is the form used to document the administration of medication by school personnel. A separate record is to be used for each medication. All sections are to be completed. When medication is given, place your initials with the exact time of administration in the box with the corresponding date. Writing must be legible and in black or blue ink. If an error is made, cross through it with a single line and initial it. Only sign for medication you actually give. Do not sign for someone else. When a medication is given, it must be documented immediately. If it's not signed right away, someone else may think the medication was not given and give it again. The key at the top are codes to document why medication was not administered. Place the appropriate code in the box to explain. For example, if a student was absent, write A in the box for that date. Dates when school is not in session are already crossed out for you. Remember, there is a 30-minute window on either side of the prescribed time to administer medication. If not administered within that time frame, medication should be held, parent notified, and an incident report completed. Every attempt should be made to locate that student before the 30-minute window is up. If medication is ordered at two different times during a school day, two separate MARs should be used, one to record each time. This is also true for as-needed medications that are being given more than once a day. If a range in dosage is ordered, for example, one to two puffs of an inhaler, indicate how much was administered. The back page of the MAR is where your initials are identified with a corresponding signature. It is also where you can document any occurrence or incident, such as noting the use of a key code on the front of the record. It is also important to document communication with parent when medication is running low or soon to expire. All documentation should be dated and include a signature. Medication Incident Report Schools are accountable for all medication administered, therefore any errors or incidents must be reported. Why are these reports necessary? Because they document and explain the error, it is also used to prevent future errors and to notify the appropriate people. It is not used to place blame. This is an example of a medication incident form. When completing an incident report, be sure to fill in all blanks. This includes student name, date of incident, school where incident occurred, name of medication and dosage prescribed, and a full description of the incident. It should also include the actions taken following the incident. For example, first aid given or a call to 911. Parent notification of the incident should always be noted. The report should then be signed by the person giving the medication and an administrator. Reports are filed at the school and often kept with school accident reports and are not filed in the student's record. Requests from parents for a copy should go through the legal department. Field trips. During a field trip, students must receive their medication just as they would at school. A parent may administer medication to his or her own child if they attend the field trip. However, the school cannot require that a parent or guardian attend a field trip, regardless of the student's condition or medication required. This is the law. The parent may choose to withdraw permission to give the medication on the field trip, preferably in writing, but the school should never contact the parent to ask them to do so. Attach any documentation of this 
to the medication administration record. If the information to withhold medication is obtained verbally, it should be documented on the back of the MAR with signature by the employee who received the information. Extended or out-of-state field trips. The previous information only applies to in-state field trips. Training provided by our school board nurses is not valid out of our own state. Out-of-state field trips will require individual planning for students who need medications that they are not authorized or able to give themselves. An extended field trip is one that extends beyond normal school hours or over a period of multiple days. The school board nurse and clinic personnel should be notified at least two weeks in advance of these field trips. Examples of extended field trips are St. Augustine, C Camp, ROTC, band, and chorus trips. If additional medication is needed or medication is to be administered at times other than as stated on the current authorization, a new or additional authorization will be required. Arrangements should be made in advance with clinic personnel if medication needs to be signed in or out after school hours. SCPS employees should not carry medications for students who are authorized to carry and self-administer their own medication. Prior to a field trip, teachers are responsible for notifying clinic personnel of upcoming field trips. Adequate time is needed to prepare paperwork and plan for additional trainings when needed. Clinic personnel are responsible for preparing the required paperwork which includes field trip medication log and record, as well as a copy of the authorization form. The teacher or other trained staff member should schedule an appointment with the clinic assistant to prepare and count medications for the field trip. Confirm that you are preparing the right medication for the right student with the right authorization. Field trip medication log. Different forms are used for field trips. These forms allow for signing out multiple medications on one form per student. So for example, if a student has both an EpiPen and an inhaler, both can be signed out on the field trip medication log for that child. The same form can also be used for multiple field trips throughout the school year, so they should be kept easily accessible. The pills must be counted each time the medication is signed in or out. Medication must remain in the original container. During the field trip, personnel who sign out medication retain responsibility throughout the field trip for carrying and administering it. Staff carrying a student's emergency medication must remain with that student. If medication requires refrigeration, accommodations must be made. A cooler with ice packs may be used. Here is an example of a medication administration record for a field trip. Multiple medications may be documented on one form. This same record may be used for all field trips during the school year if the orders do not change. After the field trip. Upon return, unused medication and all forms should be taken to the clinic as soon as possible. Medication must be counted and recorded on the field trip medication log. Check the MAR for time, initials, and signature if medication was administered. Place an F for field trip on the original medication administration record. Unused or discontinued medications. Parent or legal guardian should be notified when unused or discontinued medication is left at school. Notification can be in writing or by phone and documented on the back of the MAR. A parent notification form is available. A deadline for pickup should be specified, and if not picked up by then, the medication should be destroyed. All medication should be picked up by the last day of student attendance, unless attending summer school at the same site. If student is attending summer school at another location, parent must pick up the medication and authorization and deliver it. Do not send meds in the courier. 
Guidelines for proper disposal of medications are described in the Health Services Manual. Contact your school board nurse for further information. Medication audits. The school is accountable for all medication to be administered at school. The medication audit is used to monitor and document the proper and safe administration of medication. All medication forms are considered legal documents and should only be completed using blue or black ink. If an error is made, put a line through the error and write error and your initials. Do not use whiteout. The school nurse will observe the designated employee for proper medication administration techniques. The nurse completes formal medication audits at least once a year and results are given to the principal. Additional audits and observations are conducted as deemed necessary by the nurse. This completes the training on Seminole County's medication policies and procedures. Be sure to also complete the Medication Administration Basics training on the Safe Schools website. Contact your school board nurse for any questions regarding this training.